Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Want to pop in. Now listen, I can't talk as loud as I normally would talk because I'm in the hotel. And I'm on the road. So this Hotel Chronicles. I'm out working with one of my college basketball teams. I told y'all I'm a team life coach for some college and pro sports teams. So I'm working with a team today. And want to pop in really quick, though, before I go speak to the team later today and share this this lesson. I, I got a question, and I want you to understand a lot of these topics come from if I get some time to read the comments, I'll see a question in there. And being that I try to do a video a day, that's 365 videos. Now, I won't literally have one every day, but I try to. And so, and if I wanna do this for the next 10 years, that's 3,650 videos. So when you have a question, just drop it in the comments and I just might see it. If, if I don't respond to it, it either was a question that I can't speak to or I didn't see it. Now see, think about this now. It's mistakes that men make and women will know those best because you're on the receiving end of a man's mistakes. Then it's mistakes that women make and men, we will know best because we're on the receiving end of that. Now, the thing about this is most men will not tell you the mistakes you make because he doesn't want you to know. If you know your mistakes, then you're going to stop making them. Then he stopped getting, he stopped being able to take advantage. And so then he has to man up and do the right thing. So most men will not tell you. By the time I was 22, I hadn't been through all around everything, done everything, had a lot of miles on me. Okay, I had more miles than a 67 Chevy. And here I was sitting down and decided to write a book. Now I wrote that first book really, really raw. It's a raw book. The updated version probably would be Mrs. Wright. Uh, my book, Mrs. Wright, the purple and white one. Some of y'all have read it. Now, I was talking about in that first book, what daddy never told his little girl, really about the mistakes that women make and how the things that I was able to kind of get away with, the lessons that I learned, but not all the way. My dad wrote a book, Tony Gaskin Sr. Some of y'all have his book and maybe thought it was mine, some of you. Once you got in there and started reading the forward written by me, you realize it was his. But it's called Eight Mistakes Women Make. Now, I don't know the eight mistakes that he put in there, and I have not read the book. And I know that sounds strange, but I don't read any relationship books because I don't want to teach anybody's message other than the message God has given me. And that because we all have a work to do. So it do me no good to be teaching somebody else message because that's what he or she is teaching. We all got to add our own voice to the world. And so I don't read relationship books. I read business and all the other kind of books that I need stuff that I don't teach on per se. So in the eight mistakes women make, I don't know what the mistakes are in his book, in my dad's book, but a lot of women have read it and they've told me that it's a really good book so you might want to try it out but a lady asked me a question and she said um she said tony you mentioned yesterday's video she said you talking about dating multiple people and so should a woman tell the man that she's dating multiple people and that's what triggered this here now how many men do you meet that say hey I just want to, I just want to let you know you one of many okay let that sink in I just want you to know you one of many okay what's the date Thursday you Thursday woman okay you uh, Thursday Tiffany Tiffany Thursday that's who you are now tomorrow I'm gonna have freaky Friday then I'm gonna have sexy Saturday that I'm going to have sanctified Sunday. How many men come to you and tell you that? It's a few. And when a man tells you that, it's because he does not like you. He really don't want nothing with you. 
Now, I was recording my video yesterday, okay, and I was at home, at home base, and I was in my office. Now, my office used to be a bedroom, and just like how you see this bedroom, I'm in a hotel, where if you take off that back third of the room, if you cut that off, that's what my wife did to my office. And so that back third, that whole back third right back there would be a walk-in, it's my wife walk-in closet now. She cut off a third of the room and made it a walk-in closet. So it's the length of a bedroom. And when I'm doing my videos, if she in her closet, she in the eavesdropping. And she heard me, now I'm in a hotel, now this ain't, this ain't my house. But my video from yesterday, um, Why do men date multiple women? That was the name of it. So she heard me talking. And then when I got done talking, I went into the room. And she was in the closet straightening up stuff, moving stuff around, really in the eavesdropping. And she was like, oh, I, I heard about the other young lady you was talking to when you met me. Uh, why don't you go back to her? That's who you really wanted. <laughs> and she was joking. And I, you know, got us a good little laugh. But she didn't know nothing about that. Because when I met her, now she knew later, like yesterday wasn't the first day. She just was joking when she brought it up. But when I met her, I did not say to her, uh, yeah, you know, I just met four other women within the last two weeks. And I'm kind of judging all of y'all against each other to choose which one of y'all I want to date for real. That did not come out my mouth. Did not come out my mouth. Never would have come out my mouth because... When I sat down and I, I saw her, I saw I like her, and I talked to her, I saw I like her, I would never tell her about another woman. So a man wants you to think that you are the only woman. And see, this is how men are. Men so selfish that a man will tell you that, hey, let's be exclusive. You're the only woman I'm talking to. You're the only woman I'm going on a date with. You can't be dating other men. You can't be talking to other men. Are you talking to any other men? And then you say no. And you may actually not be talking to any other men. And he will ask you that to get some comfort in his heart to know that you're not talking to any other men. But then he talking to Saint Jew, Sally, and everybody. And he will never tell you that. And a lot of men are selfish on that level. So that's why I come in and I, so really my whole work is about leveling the playing field. Leveling the playing field without stooping to the level of an immature grown boy. So take some of the things that men do well, even if they do it wrong or they do it for the wrong reasons, some of the things that, that you should do or could do, that's not compromising. Listen to what I'm saying now. Not compromising your self-worth or your self-respect. I'm not saying go sleep around because men sleep around. That's something that men do that men should not do. That's not a good thing. Yes, men do that. Uh, and so what happens is a lot of times women confuse that and they say, oh, well, if a man could do it, I could do it. I remember that's what um, my ex-girlfriend in college told me after she slept with five of my teammates because I was sleeping around. She said to me, her roommate told her, well, if he can do it, you can do it. And so she said she took that and decided, okay, if you're doing it, why don't I do it? And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? But I deserved it. But the, the thing about it was, the stupid thing about it was, is just because I'm hurting myself, because I'm hurting my body, because I'm creating soul ties, don't mean you should stoop to my level. Two wrongs don't make a right. What you need to do is leave me. Keep your class, keep your dignity, and just leave. Don't go, and this is where women take to act like a lady, think like a man, too literal. And a lot of women now are starting to think that that means Okay, I'm going to do just what a man. So if a man can have a one-night stand, I'm going to have a one-night stand. Or if a man can use, uh, use a woman for money, I'm going to use a man for money. If a man can, you know, sleep with all these people or do all of this and 
all this here oral and you know, sang on the microphone, eating peach cobbler on the first night, in the first week. Oh, that's what I'm going to be doing. And so here you is. There's so many women today that I, I done heard from and talked to, even at seminars, choking on microphones. It is so many women choking on microphones and don't think nothing wrong with it. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So what I want you to understand is that one of the number one things that women do wrong is talking too much. Talking too much. That's 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 this number one thing. Now, I'm gonna go through some 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 other things in other videos, but and this is what I mean is this also goes into play with emotional intelligence. My wife has showed me this. She don't talk too much. And 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 ooh wee, this woman here is something else. Boy, look here. That's why we writing this book, A Woman's Influence, because this woman here really just, whew, she wrapped me all around her finger. And let me tell you how, though. She read my first book, What Daddy Never Told His Little Girl. That's the title of the book. I really don't want you to buy it. I'd rather you buy Mrs. Wright, because that book is published. What Daddy Never Told His Little Girl published with somebody else, and they's stealing all the money. But Mrs. Wright, I published that through my own publishing company. And it's pretty much the same thing. Very similar. Not really. But my wife read that first book, and I have not been able to get nothing past her since. I mean, she's a studier. She's studious. She's a straight-A student. Okay, she got a master's degree in medical sciences. Got a a bachelor's degree in biomedical sciences. If you ever tried to go down that science route, you know it is not easy. She's very smart. When she read that book, she took it word for word, literal, and it had me wrapped around her finger ever since. That is why I'm trying to help y'all understand. When you wonder, Tony, why and how are you who you are today and your wife happy and not being cheated on. You see, ain't no jump offs in here. Ain't no jump off popping out behind me, jack in the box, okay? My wife got a man to herself, and I'm gonna tell you why. Cause I gave away the game. Just like I'm giving away the game on all these videos. The thing, the different thing about my wife is she didn't try to argue with me about men. She didn't come and say, oh, well, that's not fair. That's not right how men do. She said, okay, this the game. Okay, boom. Gotcha. All right. Watch this. She, without, without losing herself, she ain't go sleep around. She ain't become loose booted. She didn't stoop to my level. What she just did is she showed me, I'm not going to let you play me like a fiddle. I'm not going to let you use and abuse and dog me out. Because I now, now I know this is all a game. Now I know men playing games that you're not really about that life. I'm going to call you bluff, and you're going to be a man for me. So that's what she did differently. So when I say don't talk too much, women talk too much in the sense of you come in and you tell all your business. You tell all your business on the first date. I, t I tell people all the time, like with my mama, my wife was so shocked after she met my mama. You sit down for an hour with my mama and you know the middle name of the last man she slept with. And she just talked that much. And that's how a lot of women are. You tell your whole life story. You, I see women in the comments on YouTube, a public platform. Got your name out there, got your face out there. Your coworker could be working, could, could be watching my videos. These videos circulating, okay? I checked in at the airport today, and the security at the TSA security, before you go through the security line, she knew exactly who I was. And she said, hey, Timmy, if you're watching this, uh, young lady, hey, how you doing? God bless you. Hey, thank you for watching the video. She knew exactly who I was, and she told me she watched the videos and that they helped her. When I got on the plane 
a, a lady was walking down the aisle. I told you I don't miss nothing. I look at everybody. I'm looking at everything. And I'm looking right at the lady. And she walking down the aisle. She a stewardess. You know, they doing the instructions. They getting ready. I'm always looking out for them anyways because they tell you to put your phone on airplane mode and I still be texting. So I be looking out for them. And so she coming down the aisle. I seen her coming down the aisle. I look at her. She a stewardess or a flight, of, flight of this or flight attendant, whichever the name that they call. She walking down the aisle and she said, hey, Tony. I say, what in the world is going on? So listen to me. These videos, they're starting to circulate. Your coworker could be watching these videos, reading the comments, and you in the comments talking about all your business. Don't tell all your business like that because if you will tell all of your business on the comments on a public forum with your name and a picture, I already know you telling too much to this man. I already know you you the reason the cage bird seen. I already know. You hear me? And so this is what women doing. You coming in to the relationship is new. And you reading a man your entire script. You read him your entire script. So now when you read him your entire script, I'm talking about like a movie script, he picked the star role. He picked the hero. He picked the star role out your script. He said, okay, mm, read my whole script. I know what role I'm going to play. So he come in and he go to playing that role because you just told him everything. When he asks you, so what kind of man are you looking for? Oh, my goodness. You were waiting for that. You were waiting for that. Oh, what kind of man am I looking for? Oh, okay, okay. Um, Excuse me. I don't have a list or anything, but give me one second. Let me get in this here purse. Okay, so I want him nice, kind, a man of God, humorous, outgoing, well-spoken, well-read, loves to travel, can cook a little bit on the side, and you're going down a whole list. And he like, he didn't even expect the answer. So now he like, oh, okay, okay. So he listening, and if, if he was talking and if what he was saying was coming out of his mouth, it would say this. It would be, now this is him looking at you. He's looking at you like, this is what he's doing while you're talking. But what he's thinking is, got him. Deer in the head, like this woman, he'll slap crazy. This woman telling me all her business. Oh, yeah, okay. I can't cook a lick, but I'm finna be Chef Boardy. Nah, okay, what else? Okay, out going. Okay, I'm finna tell I can plan us a skydiving trip for next week. I'm scared to death, but that's what we finna do. And he, okay, God fearing. Okay, soon as you finish talking, whoo, Shandro, whoo, Shandro. Excuse me, ma'am. I just, oh my goodness. It just, you were talking and, and the spirit went to flowing through you. I don't know if you realize. And so now you like, oh my goodness, this is a man of God. Oh my goodness, this is a man of God. And you sitting up and you, and so now you thinking, you done, so now you thinking God talking to you. So you leave the date, you go home before you even get home. You on, you on the phone with your girlfriend. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. Let me tell you. Girl, this is the one. This is the one. I just met him. Listen, I just want to tell you this. Keep your head up. Keep going. Keep believing and trusting in God, girl. What God has promised you, he is coming. God has showed me my husband tonight, girl. Listen to what I'm telling you. Keep your head up. And so, you ain't had a man six seconds. You went on one date, and now you're a relationship coach for your girlfriend who's single and stressed out. And you thinking, this a man of God. No. You just talk too much. You talk the whole date, didn't even realize it. You just told him everything. So now he know everything to do. Whereas when he say, so what kind of man are you looking for? Well, to be honest with you, I know him when I see him. And he'll say, oh, 
well, have you seen them? Then you say, well, the jury's still out. And he's like, oh, wow, okay. Oh, you're a slick one, huh? Oh, okay, you got all the, okay. Okay, Miss Pris. So now y'all just going back and forth. He tried to pull your card. You just show him, no, buddy. Uh-uh. Ain't doing all this talking. Let me hear you talk. So what kind of woman you looking for? Guess what? Because you didn't spill all your beans, now he might spill all his. Well, actually, what I'm looking for in a woman is this, this, and this, this. And this is what I learned from a wife. That's why I wrote the book with her, A Woman's Influence, because this woman here, see, me, I'm like my mama. I tell all my business. Y'all know all my business. And then here I am telling my business, and then people got the audacity to use my business against me. Oh, oh, well, Tony, you talking about keep your legs closed, but you ain't keep yours closed. You and your wife ain't keep yours closed. I'm like, you wouldn't even know that if I didn't tell you. And that's why I told you because I made the mistake. So keep your legs closed. A lady came in the comments the other day Um, sex is not your only power and people do not judge you just because you have sex quick you and your wife had sex before marriage but you're telling everybody else to wait duh that's why I'm telling you to wait because of my sins and transgressions and yes to a man okay you as a woman don't think sex your only power but listen to me to a man, that's the only power he care about. He don't care about your mind. He just, he's not thinking about your mind. He don't care how fast you can read. He don't care how good you can cook. He don't care how many backflips you could do. What do that mouth do? And what do you do on your bike? When you meet him, that's all he's thinking about. That is all he's thinking about. I heard my daddy say that one time. He said, men think about three things. It was coming from a daddy now, and he was nowhere near me. He was nowhere near like I was. My daddy didn't live the life that I live now. I was nasty. You hear me? I was nasty. That's why I tell you what I tell you, because I done been there and done that, okay? I'm not one of these men that ain't never done nothing and trying to tell you everything. The reason why I could talk an hour a day is because I done been there, okay? Listen to me. My daddy said, men think about three things. Sex, sex, and sex. Now, guess what? Now, before you lose hope, oh, my goodness, Tony, I am just, uh, I'm so depressed now. I just, after hearing this, it just feels like no hope. Listen, keep the hope alive. Hope against hope. Keep the faith, okay? God is real. What God has for you, can't no man take away. That's one thing you got to understand, okay? I'm just giving you some reality, but God is supernatural. He going to deliver to you what's for you, regardless of what the numbers say, regardless of what it look like, regardless of what your girlfriend's going through, what your mama went through, your auntie, your grandma. If you talking to the man on high, you going to get what's for you. And that's why you here today. Because he going to cross your path with the knowledge you need to get. And so, my daddy said that. Now, what I want you to understand is, now, yes, after a man gets beyond that, that desire, that's the first thing that a man wants. But after he get beyond that, in the sense of, not that he does it with you, but he just... Now now he's talking to you. So now that you're talking, now he starts to see your mind. Now he starts to see uh, your heart. Now he starts to see your gifts. Now he starts to see who you are. But when y'all first met, y'all just came together. Listen to me. He was worrying about one thing. And that was between your legs. That is it. Listen to what I'm telling you. It's not that deep. It is not that deep. So, so when the young lady, she said, you know, sex is not your only power. Listen to me. To a man, that's your only power. That's your superpower until he get to see the other ones. 
but that's the first one and if you get on your bike guess what you you have given all your power don't get that twisted don't 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 think you could get on your bike fast but see what i what i realized with the young lady i stepped on her toes because like grandma like my grandma used to say a hit dog holler only way you finna get in the comments arguing and debating with a man about what men think and feel is if you just got your feelings hurt you just got off your bike you just got off your bike last night or last week and it was too fast and now you trying to convince yourself that sex ain't your only power now you trying to convince yourself that a man don't judge you because of that he gonna tell you that he's not judging you but i'm here to tell you he lying he not gonna tell you you know what I've come to the conclusion that you are a loose booty and I am disgusted with you and I am appalled that you would get on your back that fast. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. That's and see this is the thing. That is what so many men so many women want to hear a man say. Nobody finna say that. Nobody finna tell you that because that's a benefit for him. So what he gonna do is use you for what you gave him, your superpower. The, the, you got a bunch of powers, okay? But don't know, he don't care about that. You and your mama and God care about your other powers. He care about that power on your bike, okay? And that's what you did. So he gonna take that. He is going to take that and then he is going to judge you if you did it too fast, period, which he decides in his mind what he think is too fast. You could decide in your mind what you think is too fast. You might say, well, one night is too fast, but two weeks ain't too fast. Okay, that's your right to feel that way. But everybody got their own right. To feel their own weight. That's why they say perception is reality. Because it's saying how you perceive the world, that's your reality. See, the world is not as, you don't see the world for what it is. You see it for what you are. So listen to what I'm telling you. When you get on your bike too fast, a man, you hear me? Okay. A man is judging you. And then from there, he going to let you stay right there. He going to keep getting that off of you. Keep getting that off of you. And then what he's going to do is go to another woman. Because remember, he dated multiple. And so when, when you get on your bike, now when he dated this one and she not on her bike, all of a sudden he put her on a pedestal. Because he's like, oh, okay. Because you know what men have been told? Men have been told, ain't nothing special about you, playboy, but by other men. I thought I was special because I was getting them. And then old look challenge man told me, I say, boy, because we were young. Old look challenge boy going to tell me, man, ain't nothing you could do I can't do. We both grown men. And then he showed me what he could do. And I say, man, and you looking like that? And you doing that? I say, well, you must be right then. Now, I ain't the best looking thing in the world, but I know he was a little more looks challenged than me. Well, he was way more looks challenged than me. And I'm like, you able to do that? So then from that point in, I said, oh, all right. Air man is equal. Air man could do what air man could do, regardless of your height, your color, your money. This right here is crazy out here. So from that point on, men know that. Men know that. So guess what? When you give in to a man too fast and he has not really worked for you, he has not earned you, what he then says to himself is, okay, well, if she'll give it to me within a month, then she'll give it to every man she meet within a month. So if she meet two men in a month, three men in a month, so now he doing numbers that might not even be the truth. Because you might have gave it to him because you felt something. But he does not know that because he's not giving himself that credit. 
So he looking at it like, okay, that means you with 12 men a year. This how it's being read. Whether you like that or not, this is how it's being read. So listen to what I'm telling you. So you going in here and you talking too much. You telling all your business. And, and when I say talking too much, I mean even down to how I am, like my mom, I'll be on the phone. I'll get a phone call, right? I'll get off the phone. And I'm on the phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blase, blase. This, that, and the third. Get off the phone. My wife's sitting there. I say, yeah, that was such and such. And he said, this, 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 this. Or that was such and such. She said, this, 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 this. I tell her every syllable of that, of that phone call I just had. I tell her every syllable. And I start to notice early on, she'll get a phone call. She'll get off the phone. I'm sitting over there waiting. I'm sitting over there. We driving. I'm over there like a deer in the headlights. And my ear is out there like a satellite dish. I'm just waiting to hear what was talked about on the phone. And she'll just sit over there. <laughs> Gone by the business. And I'm like. So, uh, who was that? You ain't going to tell me what you were talking about? And come to find out, it wasn't even nothing. And sometimes I could kind of hear the voice, but I can't make out the words. Oh, that was my mom. She was saying she went to the Jamaican restaurant and they raised the prices on oxtail. So now I'm feeling stupid. Because I want to think I caught her up in something, but then didn't even process, okay, Tony, if that was a, a boyfriend... Another man calling, she wouldn't answer the phone. But I ain't think about that. And so now I'm feeling stupid. Like, oh, 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 the oxtail went up? Oh, okay, hey, tell her to get us some oxtail so we can have us an oxtail dinner, uh, oxtail and dumpling on Sunday. So now I got to play it off like I'm not insecure. And she's sitting over there, and, and every time, and to this day, I probably could count on one hand how many times she have volunteered the information that was shared on the phone when she hang up the phone and I'm so thankful I'm out the state doing this video and my wife don't watch my video because she live with me so she don't need to sit here and talk to me because I'm talking to her anyways everything I'm telling you I already told her or I tell her so she don't watch my video and I'm so thankful because I don't want her to hear this because then she might keep on being quiet but I could count on one hand how many times she done volunteered information guess what I realized that's a that's a superpower when you not when you don't have diarrhea of the mouth see it's so most women got diarrhea of the mouth and you need some pepto bismol okay because you're telling all your business and now all he got to do is just counteract all he got to do is get in where he fit in just play the role so you want to, I, I would love a man who listens to classical music. Next thing, next, the next day you call him, he answer the phone. It's classical music blaring in the background. And he's like, hello? And you're like, hello? It's kind of loud over there. Can you hear me? Oh, oh yeah. Ho hold on one second. Um, I was just really sitting in the moment. Hold on. I'm going to turn this down. I was just basking in Beethoven. And you're like, oh, Really? Wow. Why didn't you tell me that? I love a man who listens to classical music. You had diarrhea of the mouth, so you forgot you even told him that little tidbit. He took all the notes. So now, this is what a man does, okay? And what's happening is you came in like this. But then... You went to telling all your business. So now, you like this. Just like that. You came in, you was on your game. Telling all your business, you didn't drop your guards. He knocked you out the park. Now you're on your bike. Because he didn't hit all your points. Man of God classical music or whatever kind of music it might be old school R&B 
He outgoing. He, he this man ain't been out the house in the last three months. Now he out doing walks in the park every time you call him. Why? Because you told him your whole game. Now it's another part of this. Now let me hurry up because I got to get on to my team here soon. Let me give me. Okay, I'm hurry on up. Now it's another part of this. Now you have that right there, where you telling all your business, everything you want in a man. The other part of this is when you telling, when you trying to be overly honest. Listen, you don't have to tell a lie, but you ain't got to offer up information, okay? And guess what? It's no, ain't no harm if you are you against lying. I'm against lying. So if a man say, "Hey, are you? Do you go on other dates?" Your answer could be, "Why are you? Why are you worried about it?" It, you sound like a guilty conscience. Like, what kind of question is that? You could do the Jedi mind trick on him that he feeling dumb. He feeling stupid. He feeling insecure. Now he like, oh, yeah, you right. I, just a conversation. I just was asking. It's like, okay, well, every question ain't a good question. And that's the thing that a lot of women do wrong. Is a lot of women come in and you so passive. Oh, well, you know, actually, now that you ask, I, you know, <sighs> okay, give me a, give me a second. Okay, all right. I've been listening to this guy on YouTube named Tony Gaskin. Have you ever heard of him? Okay. Now, I don't agree with everything that he says, all right? But he says a lot of good stuff. But I don't agree with everything that he says. So he says that you shouldn't tell a man that you're dating other men. And then... But I don't fully agree with that. And so I've just been conflicted with it in my spirit. And so it's so ironic that you ask me that now. And then so he like, oh, my goodness. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I cannot stand those relationship coaches online. Oh, my goodness. Like, I, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. And now he finna tell you a bold-faced lie. I went to school with one of those guys. I'm not going to say his name, but he's big right now could be the name you just said but i'm not even gonna say it but he's big right now and this man cheats on his wife every other day but yet he's making millions of dollars telling all the relationship secrets and is not living it but but guess what though now because this show boom because he listened to classical music He's outgoing. He's a man of God. Now, because he check off all your boxes, now you sitting over there, done told all your business, done told all your resources, all your allies. I tell women all the time, I'm a secret weapon. Keep me as a secret weapon. He already know who I am, Cause especially if he black, because there ain't that many black people in in the U.S. and my Facebook in 2015 and 2016 was reaching 20 million people a week. That's 80 million people a, a month. I don't even know if we got that many black people in the U.S. Okay? And this was reaching around the world. So trust me, he know who I am. If he don't know my name like a household name, Tony Gaskin, he done seen my video on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, or he done seen one of my quotes. Okay? If he got eyes. He done seen it. So he already know. He going to act like he's never heard of me. He going to act like he's never heard of me. And guess what? Now you just told him you tuning in. Now he tuning in. He watching every video just so he could counteract. Just so he could do the opposite. If not, he going to watch every video and he's going to start to grow. He going to start to grow. But his growth will be cut off. Or inhibited by your ignorance if you not growing so if you get knowledge and not applying it then knowledge is not power applied knowledge is powerful so you got to hear it so now if he hearing what I'm saying and you hearing what I'm saying now he know you know the game so he got to tread lightly but when you go in there and you show your whole hand you know some of these relationship coaches, they say not to tell a guy that you're waiting until marriage.
because then the guy may go into game mode and just kind of stay there just to sleep with you or the guy will just up and leave. So now you done told all that, he already know that. And he already knew that's the truth, that you shouldn't have told him. But now that you just told him, now he just, um, check please. He ain't gonna do it right then, he ain't gonna wait about five, 10 minutes. Um, yeah, we're ready for check. When, if you hadn't opened your mouth, y'all could have got to know each other, could have built, and he would have fell in love with you. But you can't expect a man to fall in love with you when he don't know you. And then you tell him from the get go, Ain't no prize in this for you. That ain't how it works. You got to let a man come do the work. Just like Jacob, when he had to go work for, for Leah or Rachel or Sarah or whatever her name was. I mean, he, went, he had to go do the work. The daddy didn't tell him on day one, hey, let's help play, boy. <laughs> hey, I'm going to get this seven, seven years out you. And then I'm going to give you my looks challenge, daughter. <laughs> how about that? Hey, you like that? Hey, he'll fist bump. The daddy didn't do that. He told him, oh, yeah, seven years, you know, seven years, you do the work, gotcha, you got her, my daughter's yours. He did the seven years, oh, yeah, here you go. He went in, see, they ain't had electricity, so he, daddy delivered that dark, okay, he took her right on in the house, they ain't had electricity, they ain't had candles. It couldn't see nothing. He feeling. He just was feeling. Climb on on top of. Did what he had to do. The sun came up the next morning. He look up. He ran over there to the Laban. Man, what what did you do? This this is your looks challenge, daughter. I've been working for the other daughter. So then Laban like, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, oh, young fella, hey, sorry about that, man. I ain't, I didn't tell you. I, did I forget to tell you that we don't do that like that in our culture? The older daughter goes first. But, uh, oh, my goodness. So you wanted the younger daughter? Okay. Um, well, that's going to be another seven years of work. Young, <laughs> young fella, hey, it's going to be all right. So now here he is working again. Jacob, another seven years. That right there is a lesson. That's a lesson that we done missed. Let a man do the work. Let him do the work. Because when he, do, when he does the work, he falls in love. So because he had done work so hard, he could have said, you know what, man? Forget this, man. I'm going to just take your looks, challenge daughter, and I'm going to just go on about my business. Me and her just going to ride off into the sunset. No. But because he worked. See, a real man knows that it is of the essence that he works for your heart. So you can't go into a relationship telling all your business, telling him everything you want in a man, telling him every time you done been abused, all of your hurt and pain. Because let me ask you this. If, it's, if this has not happened to you, I guarantee it has happened to somebody you know. Where they come in. And they want to tell a man. So, yeah. Well, okay. Uh, you know what? I ain't going to do the, the, the woman voice right then. Because this is a serious topic. They want to tell the man that they were touched when they was young. He doesn't know you. He don't know you. This not your friend. Okay? This not your friend. This you don't know this man from a can of paint. Why why are you telling him that you was touched under the age? That's not his business. That's between you and God. That ain't his business. He don't need to know that. So what he does is, see, a lot of times a, a grown boy can pretend to be a grown man. And because you're talking so much, you don't get to see the grown boy signs. But if you would be quiet and let him talk, 
you'll hear grown boy all through his mouth. It, it, it'll be on his breath. His cologne will smell like a grown boy. You hear what I'm telling you? And so the grown boy hears this. Oh, so um, mm, that's really sad to hear. So have you, have you gone to therapy? Well, no, because my insurance doesn't cover it. You know, and um, so no. Well, what about life coaching? You know, it's life coaches. You heard of this site called MyMentor.life? Have you gone on that site and booked a coach? Uh, no, just because, you know, I really don't have the money for that. I don't have the extra money to invest in myself in that way. So I just consume free content when I can, but I can't afford to spend an extra dime. Uh -oh. So he over there like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So guess what he hears now? Guess what he hears now? He wasn't born yesterday. What he hears is trauma, pain insecurity weakness gullible naive frustrated desperate lonely that's what he hearing that's what he hearing so if this a grown boy who is posing as a grown man but you don't know it yet because you've been talking too much guess what he finna put you on your bike because you haven't healed from that trauma. Because you haven't gone and learned that what happened to you didn't just happen to you, it happened for you. To make you wiser, to make you stronger. And that you are not property. You are not a piece of meat. You are God's daughter, fearfully and wonderfully created. And he allowed you to go through that because he knew that your, sh your shoulders could carry that burden. And he knew that you could take that pain and birth purpose. That's why it was allowed to happen to you. Because you will save thousands of others by, in, by educating mothers and fathers about protecting their young daughters. Educating mothers about listening to the warning signs that's coming from their daughter. From when that man looked at her wrong. And she went to tell mama, and mama, oh, mama got to have a love too. Mama got to have a boyfriend. I got to have a life too. So you trying to tell me my boyfriend like you? Oh, you sorry, no, oh my goodness, you just like your daddy. You a, a compulsor, a pulsa liar. And she don't even know how to say the word. You was a, a pulsa liar. Just like your daddy. You is an anthological liar. And I don't heard it all. I have heard it all. Trust me when I'm telling you. This is what mama's telling. I know it's pathological. Okay. I know it's compulsive. I'm talking about this what they mama saying. Okay. So don't y'all get me confused. Now I know I hit you with a vocabulary word. Now trust me now. Listen to me. So now you preparing moms. You start your foundation. Now you able to help. But because, and see, God knew that, and that's what that's what you was going to hear in coaching. You can't afford coaching. You just heard it today. That's the message that the Lord been trying to get to you about your pain, about your trauma, about everything you done been through. Turn the pain into purpose. Stop procrastinating. Write your book. Stop procrastinating. Start your nonprofit organization, which you still can get paid from. A lot of times people hear nonprofit and they think that, there's no money in it. No, a church is a non-profit. Do you pass a look broke? A church is a non-profit. <laughs> okay, what I want you to understand is you could do the work of the Lord and still be compensated, still earn a living. That's what the Lord wanted you to hear, but you didn't go to coaching, you didn't go to therapy, so you didn't hear that. So then you go to this strange man on y'all first, second, third, fourth, fifth date, and you using him as a therapist, but don't realize that he don't have your best interest at heart because he's a grown boy posing as a man, but you don't know that because you haven't shut up long enough to hear him talk. So you tell him your business 
Next thing you know, he using it against you. Because you still under the mindset that if I'm in a situation with a man where the act of intercourse could happen, I got to give in. Because if I don't, things could get physical, forceful. You still under that mindset. You still under that guilt, that fear, that shame. So he takes and he uses that against you because he realizes you haven't gone and gotten the knowledge to learn that you are powerful and that you could create boundaries and that you can say no and that you can stand on your own two feet, that you can keep your legs closed and that a man will walk you down the aisle and ain't even sniff nowhere near that peach cobbler. You hear me? Ain't had a whiff of it and you down the aisle with a rain with a down payment on the house with, with, with a good man because you done went and got the knowledge but if you ain't got the knowledge he's okay gotcha then he get you on your bike and because you still have not worked on yourself then you come in the comments arguing with me so now you arguing with me who can't touch you, don't want to touch you. When I say touch, I mean lie down with. Can't touch you, don't want to touch you, but you want to get mad with me. But then the grown boy you on the date with finna use you and abuse you, mop you up like some dirty water on the floor, and you want to come argue with me. But then let him have his way do what he please when i tried to tell you i tried to tell you what he coming for what he dare to do what he trying to do but you want the art oh sex is not the only power and a man does not judge you because you sleep with him fast. That is not true. It is so many women who slept with a man on the first night and not even married. Do you live with them? Do you know for a fight she happy? Do you think he faithful? Okay. Just because you see her Facebook posts. Just because you see her at the job. You don't know what kind of hell and how water she going through with that man that she got on her bike on the first night for. Her. So, because she might feel shame about what happened, she'll come in the comments and agree with you and side with you. Yeah, girl, listen, do not listen to that Tony Gaskins. I got on my bike on the first night and we've been married 20 years. Yeah, and he been cheating on you for 20 years. Yeah. He been sleeping with a man for 20 years behind your back. Listen to me. Don't know man. Don't know man that is heterosexual wow on a woman that get on her bike on the first night. And I advise you, if that was you and you married, instead of getting mad with me, trying to defend your relationship to me, Get in your prayer closet and start praying and casting down every demon and stronghold that the devil got on your marriage. Stop. Don't come arguing with me. Go to the Lord for your transgression because I'm here to tell you. Oh, no man respect that. Even if he was a dog and that's the that is a double standard. But you know what about that double standard? My daddy said this to my sister when we were growing up. She hit me. She hit me. And I hit her back. Ugh. But I'm stronger than her. Bigger than her. Two years older than her. She started crying. She ran to him. Daddy, Tony hit me. He said, well, what happened? I said, she came and hit me. I just hit her back. And he said to my sister, he said, Tish, you can't hit somebody and then get mad if they hit you back harder. You know what I apply that to in relationships? The way I apply that in relationships is you can't stoop to
to somebody level of immaturity and immorality and then get mad at them when they judge you for it. Because that's what you did. So yeah, he laid down with you. But you can't get mad at him if he get up and turn his nose up at you. Even though he was down there in the mud wallowing with you. And both of y'all filthy. Because guess what? He got the right just like you got the right. Women come to me all the time and say, Oh, I do not understand. So let me get this straight. Okay, they love that. So let me so let me get this straight. Let, let, let me try to understand what you're telling me. So you are telling me that he could sleep with me on the first night. But I'm the loose booty. I'm the one got to pay the price. That's what you're trying to tell me. That is not fair. Life ain't fair. Life ain't fair. So stay off your bank. Life is not fair. So stay off your bank. Because yes, yes, he asked you to get in the bed. And yes, he going to judge you if it was too fast. That je That is life. That's life. I can't change that. I, I can't reach every man out here and say, listen, stop tricking these women into the bed. Stop asking these women to get into the bed. Because guess what? The one thing that he chasing is what's between your leg. He don't care about what's coming between my teeth. He could not care less. He cared the least that he could care. The news flash, it is he couldn't care less. You hear people say, I could care less. That's not the saying. Because if you could care less... That don't make no sense. It's I couldn't care less. Okay, new flash. He want what's between your leg. So I could talk to him till I'm blue in the face. But if you don't have standards, if you don't have some stipulations, if you don't have your policies and procedures for your brand, guess what? He gonna have you swing from the chandeliers. Because this is what you got to understand. Women try to tell me, Tony, you got to talk to the man. Talk to the man. You got to talk to the man. Listen to me. I'm a man. I'm a man. That's why I don't waste too much time talking to men because I'm a man. I know men. Men spit in the face of God. Listen to what I'm telling you. Pastors who got to talk to God every day is cheating on their wife and sleeping with their congregation. Men spit in the face of God. A man is not about to listen to me if you're going to be on your bike. But see, in the fairy tale world that a lot of women live in, this is what you want to happen. You want to get horny. Tell a man, mm, come here, baby. Mm, come here, baby. Oh. <clears throat> Rip this man down. And then you want this man to... Um, excuse me, excuse me. Um, it, Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do this because I've been listening to Tony Gaskins and, you know, he was telling me, do not sleep with a woman before marriage. And so although you want to go there, I've been listening to Tony Gaskins and I'm not going to be able to do that. That's what y'all expecting to happen. That's what you want to happen. Wait for it. Wait on it. Wait on it. You'll hear your eulogy first. It won't happen. So you got to have your own standards. You got to know what you stand for. You got to know who you are. You got to keep your mouth closed. Keep your legs closed. Keep your ears and your eyes open. That's going to tell you everything you need to know. So stop talking so much. Set your standards and stick to them. And you're going to see everything you need to see. Listen to me. Hey, this is Tony Gass. I got to get going. 59 minutes. I, I can't go over an hour yet. I ain't. The Lord ain't called me beyond our mark yet make sure you click the link in the description go to my mentor.life and book your coaching session with one of the coaches if you are a coach or a consultant make sure that you sign up just need your nice head shot make sure you join us write your bio and start helping the world this is tony gaskins god bless you